Let's cut to the chase. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is stirring the pot with her bold stock moves, and it's time we dissect this. Lover or hater, there's undeniable value in tracking Pelosi's trades because her track record is impressive. Let's talk about Nancy's trading success. First off, let's look at her recent performance and why you should care. Pelosi has a knack for beating the market, nearly tripling the S&P 500 returns in 2023. This year, she's doing even better. In Congress, the real gold mine isn't the $174,000 salary, it's the insider information. Lawmakers get the scoop on government contracts, military actions, and economic shifts before the public does, giving them a significant stock market edge. To put this into perspective, Nancy's portfolio recently hit all-time highs, up an estimated $23 million. That's 130 times her salary. Today, we're diving into her recent moves and giving you a rundown on all of her holdings. Nancy recently dumped 2,000 shares of Visa, which is down about 5% in the last three months. Maybe she sees something coming for Visa, wanted to lock in profits, or just wants to move her money into something better performing. I can't say I blame her, with consumer debt skyrocketing to $1.12 trillion and foreclosures rising nationwide. Maybe good old Nancy knows something we don't. Next, she sold 2,500 shares of Tesla on June 6th. With Tesla up 39% in the last month, she sold a bit early, but don't cry for Nancy. She still holds Tesla stock and is doing just fine. Tesla was also down 8.44% yesterday, and we'll cover that when we get to the chart. And Nancy's most intriguing recent trade, she and her husband Paul just bought 20 call options for Broadcom with an $800 strike price expiring in June of 2025. Broadcom is a major government contractor about to undergo a stock split, giving us two compelling reasons to pay attention. Now, Broadcom isn't just another tech company. It's a juggernaut in the semiconductor and infrastructure software industries. Founded in 1961, Broadcom has become a cornerstone in the tech world, with 99% of internet traffic passing through their chips. This makes Broadcom an essential player in the tech supply chain. So why is Broadcom stock poised to rise? The increasing demand for data center solutions, driven by the growth of cloud computing, bodes well for Broadcom's products. Plus, the rollout of 5G technology is set to boost demand for their wireless solutions. Nancy also loaded up on NVIDIA, buying 10,000 more shares on June 26th. I've covered NVIDIA in detail on my channel, so I'll just say I love NVIDIA and think they are well positioned for the next few years. Some analysts even believe NVIDIA could double again before 2025. Now, is Nancy Pelosi engaging in insider trading? According to the Stock Act of 2012, members of Congress, the President, Vice President, and all cabinet members must report their trades within 45 days for themselves or immediate family members. So Nancy gets the inside scoop and her husband Paul pulls the trigger. Really nice teamwork, right? But as the laws stand, Nancy isn't doing anything illegal. Do I think Nancy is a snake in the grass? Absolutely. Do I think these laws will ever change meaningfully to make such acts illegal? Nope. When you make the laws, it's too easy to exclude yourself from those same laws. While this kind of insider trading should be illegal, the next best thing we can do is follow Nancy's trades, do our research, and draw our own conclusions. If we can't beat them, we might as well join them, right? Let's jump into the charts and do a quick review of Nancy Pelosi's main holdings. The first stock we're covering in Nancy's portfolio is good old NVIDIA, ticker NVDA, and we're just going to go through the charts very quickly. We can see it's in a real strong upward trend. At the top, we've got my percent change bar. Love for this to be green and especially light green. Yesterday, they were down about 5 5.57% and the overall markets were down quite a bit, especially the Magnificent 7, but these are unreal stats. In one month, they're up 4.6%, two months, 44%, six months, 140%. Now, if you're looking for a good times to buy, there's a couple of different ways we can look at it. We can use indicators, which I do, but if you're not using a lot of indicators, one thing you can look at is the 20-day EMA, which is this little blue line right here, and when a stock is in a nice upward trend, whenever it comes down and bounces off that 20-day EMA, that can be a great time to consider buying and we can see it came down a lot 
and it might come down a little bit more before it hits that 20-day EMA. Other things we can use are the indicators. I love to get in at these blue arrows and also on my momentum dream indicator. Anytime we're green on green with a buy signal like we have here, great time to get in, especially if it's coming near the zero line. So both of these were right at the zero line, prime time to get in. And you can see we just now entered a momentum squeeze on the left-hand side. We've got a squeeze alert. One day, our momentum is currently negative and we'd like for that to be positive. So this is definitely something to watch. I love this chart on Apple for the blue arrows. Six months ago, we had a blue arrow, went up for about a week and a half, two weeks, nice little gainer right here. Then we didn't have a blue arrow fire for three months. And since that time, one, two, three, four, and check out this run from what, about $174 all the way up to 233. Beautiful run on the blue arrows. Now, if we look at the momentum dream indicator, something I wanna point out are these light blue bars. A good bull run is typically gonna be six to 10 of these bars. After that, it's gonna pull back where it either goes down or sideways. So here we can see these dark blue bars and then it actually went sideways. Bright blue went up and we can see we just now entered a dark blue bar. So that's a little bit of a caution signal for me. And if we come down to our lower buy sell indicator, you can see we're very high up here. Again, my best time to enter is whenever we're close to this zero line, something to watch for. Nancy's also in Microsoft and on our chart here you can see we're just now starting to pull back a little bit at the top here. We've got the dark blue bars. A couple other things we can look at. On the left hand side notice these blue bars here. This is the amount of volume so we can see we've got some support coming in right around $448. So that's a point to watch and then this yellow line right here this is a massive level of support coming in right around $405 and look how much volume we've had there. So a lot of people are in at around $405 and if it was going to fall hard, this is where I would look for very big support for it to bounce back up from. We're now looking at Broadcom, AVGO, and this is Nancy's latest biggest jump into the stocks where she bought those 20 options. And I like this whether Nancy's involved or not for a couple of reasons. First, we've got a net income margin of 24.1%, so we've got a very profitable company. Next, we've got a 10 for one split coming up. Love stock splits, it's gonna make this more affordable to the masses because it's trading at a pretty high price right now of $1,705. Number three, they've got a revenue growth forecast of 43.3%. So they're very profitable and they're growing their revenues. I love to see that. And the last one here is the SPX beta of 3.2. This means they've got a high beta and high beta stocks have high option premiums. So if you like selling cash secured puts or covered calls, this can be a great stock to consider owning. And then if we come down and look at our indicators, you can see we're currently in the red on the top, but we're getting close to that zero line. A 10 for one split coming up. This is definitely one that I'm watching for a potential entry into. All right, we're now looking at CrowdStrike, ticker CRWD, and in the last year, they're up 146%. Man, can Nancy pick them. We've got a revenue growth forecast of 30.8%, and you can see the rest of the charts here. We're currently in the red, have a squeeze going on, one to watch. We've got Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW. This one's been a slow burn lately, but they're a very profitable company, 31.4%. Revenue growth forecast, very respectable at 16.1%. For Amazon, ticker AMZN, over the last three months, they're only up 5%, but over the last year, they've had quite a comeback. They're up 51%, revenue growth forecast of 11.6%, and their net income margin, 6.4%. This has actually improved quite a bit over the last, oh, six months or 12 months. Oh man, now we're looking at Tesla and they've been all over the place this year. They've been down as much as 40%. They've shot back up and this is truly an unbelievable run. What did it do? It ran from what, about $180 all the way up to 271. And this is in a one month time frame. It's got a pullback now to be expected. And what price levels am I watching? First one would be this 20-day moving average, about 217. After that, we've got real strong support way down at 175. So why did Tesla drop yesterday? First off, they've had an unbelievable run uh, based on what I think is pretty weak news uh, came out on their deliveries. They beat expectations, but expectations still weren't very great. And then yesterday they dropped because the robo taxi, it was supposed to be coming out in the very near future. That got postponed two months, but I would be looking for a pullback on this one and how, how far down it goes, wait for it to bounce back up before going back in. At least that's what I would do. All right, we're now looking at Alliance Bernstein, ticker AB. This one really isn't my style, but I wanted to show the chart on it. And we can see over the last six months, they're up 8%. Over the last year, 7%. So a slow burner on this one. Maybe Nancy knows something. 
And the last one we're covering today is good old Walt Disney, ticker DIS. And Nancy, she's got a little bit of this. It's one of the smaller holdings in her portfolio. It's really not my style. Uh, for a net income margin, 1.9% pretty slim. And if you look over at the revenue growth forecast, it's only 2.8%. So I don't get excited about this one. Maybe you do. The trading activities of Congress members and their spouses have focused scrutiny with calls for a ban on individual stock trading due to access to sensitive insider information. However, Pelosi has consistently opposed such legislation, emphasizing the importance of a free market economy. In December of 2021, she said, they should be able to participate in that. Nancy's answer just reinforces my belief that Nancy Pelosi is a snake. I'd love to know what you think about Nancy Pelosi, so please sound off in the comments below. This should be fun, and I welcome comments from everyone. Pro-Nancy, anti-Nancy, whatever you want, drop your comments down below. And if you're serious about improving your investing skills, join our community. I share daily stock picks and trade alerts, and our active community helps each other become better investors. Join my Patreon to learn how to evaluate companies, invest long-term, and use options for short-term gains. Check out BeastModeAnalysis.com, a platform I created for side-by-side -side stock comparisons. It's $30 a month and covers over 30,000 U.S. stocks, plus five international markets. Keep it real, and I'll see you in the next video.